everybody, and welcome back to Brainstorm Brewery. We had to take 24 hours to recover from the podcast party, so we're coming to you. Uh, you'll get this on time, but for us, we're recording a little later in the week. And that is because we had an amazing party that I'm still getting over from GP Indianapolis. Magic Fest. Magic, Magic Fest. Fest. Well, there is a GP there. Uh, yeah, but the but party we was at the GP. We had the our, party was not at the it GP. Was, I can't tell. Before we go any further, I mean, we have to talk about this about how awesome it was to have everybody out. We had about 75 chairs set up, and the person at the venue asked me if we wanted any more. And I was like, yeah, I mean, we probably won't need them, but it can't hurt, right? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and fill the room with tables. So we had like 115 chairs. And you know hang what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. So DJ and I are just going to sit here and pretend that you actually came and helped yeah. <laughs> set up instead of us saying we needed more yeah, tables Yeah, J- Jason and I were the ones that – Jason, me, and JJ were the ones who got into the room at like – two o'clock and we're like planning logistics, figuring out where the catering and the tables were going to go at physically moving figuring tables out, and chairs, figuring out where the catering was going to go. Oh, physically oh, moving door, tables and chairs. You slept in oh. till four and we yeah. set up the room and you're like, Oh, using my logistics powers. I determined we need more <laughs> tape <laughs> out of here, Corbin. Yeah. That's how you gaslight into everyone into believing that all of that wasn't decided during a long string of emails between me and all the, uh, the four or five different event coordinators I had to work. Sure, and that's why we showed up and there were 75 chairs in the room, right? Because you I mean, yeah. it. Because I thought that's how we thought you thought we needed 50. And before the party started, you thought it was going to be trash and nobody was going to come. You were uh, sitting there said, in the I room. I said our patrons are trash. You said in the room at five o'clock, oh, no one's going to be here. This is going to be terrible. And JJ was like, no, it's going to be good, Jason. And you're like, you don't know that, JJ. The point All is, that happened. we had 120 chairs and we were staying in room only by the middle of the party. It was incredible. For like most of the entire party. Yeah. yeah. People I mean, would just come in and then leave and it was fine. Uh, we were giving out, you know, we were giving out free drafts. That'll obviously get people in. But yeah, we had people from the horror convention come over, the, the horror movie convention that was going on. We had people who had heard of the podcast. People who were really excited to be there. People who had just maybe heard of us once or twice. And then there were the people who heard the announcement about free drafts and came over. But regardless, we fired off things all night. We gave away things all night. It was we fired eight boxes worth of War of the Spark drafts, yep. two Battle Bond boxes worth of drafts, you and ultimate uh, masters. One, one Ultimate Masters worth of bo- boxes worth of draft, Cube. and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. <laughs> Cube and Commander Games. It was amazing. We were running around the whole time uh, coordinating everything, trying to get all the, the events firing, trying to do all the giveaways. Uh, it was great. So and, thank and you. And shout out everybody. to everybody who declined to participate in said games in order to help things run smoothly uh shout out to jj emily aj josh uh and several other people who stepped up and just helped out i mean there were a lot of people who were like hey do you need help with anything do you need help uh like packing up or cleaning stuff up or just like handling logistics or giving away cards or like making sure giveaways run smoothly it was all it was all fantastic it took a village it did it was it was incredible so uh we're going to do it again next year. We don't know details, obviously, but... Uh, we don't even have the GP schedule for <laughs> right. four months from now, yeah. so... so, but after how successful it was, uh, you can be sure. We also want to thank Channel Fireball for, you know, allowing us to have it in the venue because they didn't even have to do that, but instead they partnered they with us on it, let us have it literally across the hall from the GP. You walked out of GP, it was right there. They let us do a couple announcements over the PA. Uh, it was great. So whole thing was more successful than I think we could have hoped for. And shout out to Wizards for giving us away some, giving us some commander decks, some play mats, uh, yep. a commander anthology, a lot of cool stuff. We gave away the vampire, like one of each of the C seventeen and C eighteen decks. It was really yeah, cool. and that's that's Wizards. They're like, well, we don't acknowledge the secondary market, so they look at C eighteen and C seventeen. Like these products are equivalent. <laughs> Let's give them one of each to give out because. There is no secondary market. There is only different. There's only years. Teferi's protection and <laughs> the Ur Dragon. And... <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. So that yeah. was that. Uh, we did a lot of other fun stuff. For those of you who want to hear more about sort of the exploits and shenanigans of the weekend, uh, check out the after hours. We're definitely going to talk about it there at some point over the next week or two. It'll it'll come out in uh, after hours yes. near you. Where does one listen to after hours though? I mean, I assume I we gonna, have people I listening to you who were there. In, like, you yeah. throwing to me is gross. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. No, what <laughs> I mean is, I wonder where people could listen to the after hours. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to do the Patreon pitch now. <laughs> I do when you least expect it. Like, that's the point. 
<laughs> I understand. Well, I imagine we have uh, people. This was the value play. And uh, this, as I realized, was an excellent litmus test for those who people who showed up who had not listened to the podcast to determine whether or not they would like it. We had a, a cash bar, but we also had drink tickets uh, that we had paid for in advance. And the cash bar was obviously very expensive. It was a convention center cash bar. It's like seven dollars for a beer or whatever. Uh, Shout out to everybody who bought me a beer. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the convention center for using their logistics prowess to turn uh, napkins into drink tickets. <laughs> yeah, when they forgot the drink tickets, we got half a roll of drink tickets and half a thing of napkins. Well, we <laughs> turned uh, bulk commons into raffle tickets, so everybody was being a little bit. That is that yeah, is that was, our thing that now. That's good. our that's our brand. Yeah, it, that was it great. was it was a good idea, except when. Three people are like, we all have the same card. No, but see, this was a, this was the test though. It was so cool. Was, I told everybody, look, you can. We have a no, but we have a cash bar. If you want to drink, feel free to drink. If here's the pro tip though, go to Patreon.com/slash/BrainstormBrewery. Give us a dollar. I'll give you a drink ticket. And anybody who recognized the value of that proposition signed up. We had like thirty well, new signups. Anybody who recognized the value of that proposition knows to cancel Patreon <laughs> before the ten months it'll take that to pay off for us. <laughs> Well, sure, but that's fine. But I, I told them go to patreon.com slash brainstorm brewery. They'll realize that once they have access to our discord for a dollar ever, which is a uh, 0.12 or 0.15 <laughs> dr- convention center drinks <laughs> per episode. <laughs> they can have access to our discord and uh, make lots of money in there because we're dropping knowledge bombs all the time and people are buying and selling to and from each other. And uh, there are memes. It's a good time. Yeah, that, that was great. So, I mean, I fig- figured out the best way. I mean, you just be honest with people. Is it, No, you. somebody asked if they could just give me a dollar or whatever. It's like, no, you can't give me a dollar. You you have to go sign up. That way you'll forget about it in a month and we'll make money off of you. You just got to, it's all about that transparency. Yep. Speaking of transparency, might I recommend checking out our sponsor, ChannelFireball.com, the best content site for Ooh. Magic the Gathering on the internet. That was clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> that was as clumsy as you trying to hand the ball off to me. Do a Patreon pitch. I'm like, no, let's not do a running a... play on our own goal line. You're like, all right, well, I'll punt. They only do running plays on their own goal line. Do not make football references. <laughs> that was as clumsy as you trying to hold a beer in your hand while unconscious on the couch Sunday night. <laughs> yeah, uh, the whole thing got to me pretty hard. I just fell asleep with a beer in my hand Sunday night. And the... after I, it was the hardcore. JJ hard took it out day. of your hand and you didn't wake up. I mean, that's just disappointing. Yeah, that would never happen to me. No one's taking a beer. <laughs> yeah, <over here>. right. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about magic. We don't want to bore everyone with the party stuff. It was great for us. It was great for the people who, who were there. And if you weren't there, you should be there next It'll year. It'll be great for you next year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but let's do Breaking Bulk. Breaking Bulk time. Breaking Bulk time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah. Breaking Bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking Bulk the end boom commander 2017 black uncommon go no reprints it's his first printing first printing ever commander 2017 black uncommon let's go commander said, let's go come on jason you know i don't know what's in commander set dj killed us with what is that card right of the raging flame or something i thought so it was wait, right of the raging it's commander Storm. 2017 that means it's either a vampire or a wizard's card correct a wizard or a dragon Correct. It, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, before it, it I said a, or it, dragon, you said correct when I said vampire wizard, so we know it's not a dragon I, card. I agree. <laughs> a DJ killed a, killed us. Well, he didn't kill us yet. I think he actually died, but DJ was wrecking us with a card in Commander uh, right of the Raging Storm, and I was like, that's a crazy new card. It's like from Commander 2015. I thought it was just printed. It was by Breaking Bulk like two years ago. Okay. Sorry to remember every Breaking Bulk from two well, years Well, remember ago. every card now, Corbin, because it'll be Breaking Bulk yeah. in 2021. My bad. On episode 450. <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. I have no clue. Uh, it is a vampire and a wizard. How about that? Ooh. Has them apples. Uh, Bloodline Necromancer is a five mana 3-2 with a life rare, link. Right? It's not. Oh, Ooh, boy. got him. No wonder when I it, didn't. When when Bloodline Necromancer enters the battlefield, you may return target vampire or wizard creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. That card's nuts. This card is sold out on Channel Fireball at $1.79. The TCG player market value of the card is over $2. And the card is just tribally goodness. I mean, people like their vampires. Less people like wizards, but I mean, it's mean still fewer. got both of those he meant, tribes. He meant fewer, don't worry. Got him. 
<laughs> well, I got Bloodline Necromancers for days. That's what I got. And this <laughs> card is worth pulling out of bulk. Absolutely. You will find people who have ripped asunder their vampire and or wizard decks for all of the the valuable cards. They're like, I got the Tavarius Protection of the Edgar Murkov. Here's the rest of this garbage, you peasant. And then you pull a Bloodline Necromancer out and you... Uh... And then you take a bunch of terrible vampires and you put them in your Angie Falcon Wrath deck. And you're like, oh, I'm good at building. <laughs> building around or, mechanics is fun. Or that. All right, I've got one for you guys. It's uh, well, we talked about it before the cast, so unless Jason wasn't paying attention, but it's a white common from Modern Horizons. I was not paying attention. Okay, it's ephemerate. It is ephemerate. So I think I actually mentioned this a couple weeks ago when I made Soul Hoarder. Soul Hoarder, my pick of the or my breaking bulk. Soul Hoarder. Soul Hoarder. Uh, Soul Hoarder, my breaking Herder? bulk. Uh, back then. Uh, and said, hey, this deck is good. This card is good. Pick it up. Uh, since then, it's taken off in price. And now Ephemerate is following suit because not only does Ephemerate do really good things in Popper, the actual Soul Herder, Soul Herder Ephemerate deck in Modern, uh, and it's honestly more of an Ephemerate deck than a Soul Herder deck, is just really doing well right now. It's doing nuts. It's got... It can lock with it, it just creates all these locks with eternal witness where they're recurring force and negation, so you can't actually remove their um you can't really stop the loop or they loop a, a time warp so they just take all the turns. It's actually wait, a wait, really wait, powerful. One deck. one little side on this card, one one throwback to the party. Can we talk about how JJ uh, bought almost every <laughs> single card for this deck from me because I bought a collection on Thursday and then he bought the commons and uncommons for me, but I didn't have ephemerates. So he went and bought Modern Horizons packs from a vendor. He bought eight packs. He's like, oh, these will have three ephemerates. Guaranteed he got three ephemerates. Yeah, he, said, yeah, he, he did what, the math. He did the math on what the drop He did drop the math. Was. Three guaranteed ephemerates, but there were no ephemerates. Zero. But in their, their, in their place were a fiery islet, a uh, seasoned pyromancer, a foil goddamn force <laughs> negation, and then a yog moth. So that's what he got. Yeah, he did all right. And then he claimed unlucky. <laughs> yep. What he really wanted was ephemerate. Good for him. All right, Jason. That's like the casual player who opens their fetch land from yeah, Zendikar. Mad. They're like, oh, I didn't want just burning catacombs. I Wait, wanted my... a land? It's not even an 11-11 I wanted my Hellkite Charger. <laughs> yep. Jason, what's your uh, breaking ball? It's like the it's a post apocalypse, and then you find like one chocolate bar left on a shelf, and you crack it open for sustenance. And inside, it's a golden ticket to a Wonka tour. And all you <laughs> wanted was chocolate. That's exactly what that's like. He's complaining about exactly a what ticket. that's like. Huh? Didn't the chocolate bars in that movie also like it was chocolate plus a golden ticket? Right? I don't know. I think it was. Man, come on. Wait, we found a movie Jason hasn't seen. Of course, he's. Seen uh, I haven't seen the Johnny Depp one. It's not worth seeing. Okay, mine is a green Modern Horizons common. Spore frog. A green only Modern Horizons common. Oh, I hear typing. I got you. I'm thinking. I got you, you some bitches. Corbin's thinking with his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> when I really need to think hard, I have to mute my mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was typing. I'm not looking it up. I am sitting here thinking about it, though. Uh, Jason, I don't actually think I know what this is. I'm trying really hard. Give me a second, though. Like, it feels like yeah, I, I should know, know this because it I'm is trying the sixth, to remember. the most played card in, per EDH rec in Modern Horizons. Wow. Hmm. Three of the... Yeah, uh, the number one card is obviously Prismatic Vista. Then we have a uh, a couple of talismans. It's got to be snow something, right? Has it got to be snow something? Gen oh, Prismatic Gift or Prismatic Vista? Then Generous Gift. Then Talisman, Talisman, Talisman. Then this. It's it's very funny. That this is secretly the sixth most played card in the set. Yeah, and people who I, I don't pay know attention what it is. don't know. I don't know what it it's is. Spring Bloom Druid. Oh, sack a land, get two. Yeah, it's Harrow on a stick, but the lands come into play tap, which you know you think, ah, that's not great. This just looks like bulk to everybody. I mean, it is bulk. It's like a fifteen cent card. Yeah, that's why we didn't get it. Yep, this is the not going to be bulk for long. It's only printed in this set. Doesn't seem all that reprintable. This is your breaking pick of the week. Yeah, this is a breaking pick of the week. I mean, 
fine. There's no bio list on this <laughs> I did card. it with Soul Herder a couple weeks ago. That's fine. It's it, fine. This is my break of the week. You're right. It's break. He's telling people to pick it out of their bulk. He is both breaking yeah, the bulk, bulk and picking it. It, it doesn't sense. know it yet, but it's not bulk. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that's reasonable, right? Sure. I mean, it's Just, not I mean, good for the game. Bulk rares for pick of the week. It's not good mean. for the game, but it is. Uh, in, in my personal opinion, pretty much every card from Modern Horizons is a breaking pick of the week. <laughs> yeah, well, we've talked about that for a while. I mean, if you think Land of War Tribe's going to remain 30 cents and. You remember how upset people were with the value? I mean, we say this every time, but. They were like, this is the one where the value is not going to be there. This is the master set. And it's not a master set, but like, you know, whatever. Like, just everyone was so mad about how Ice $40 Fang $40 Urza, $30 Vista, yeah. $15 well, Ice, Ice Fang Coatl is getting expensive. Prismatic Vista is $20 probably, or $30 probably going to end up being like 50 at some point if they don't reprint it. Like, they were like, this is the time that these, you know, juiced supplementary sets aren't going to be worth money. Every mythic is seven dollars at least, and then well, I think Ren and Six is more than all of them combined. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's something to be said here for people. They looked at the cards, and they said, "This is a bad version of this. This is a bad version of this. Plague Engineer is a bad version of Engineered Plague, and you yeah. know, Koala's this is a bad, a bad version, version of, of a shirts. card that's only legal in Legacy." Yeah, well, <laughs> this is for modern. Well, and that's the thing, right? Though I think people didn't. I think there's actually something like to be learned there. And I mean, we've been talking about it on here for a while, but for everyone to kind of understand that none of that matters. It doesn't matter that this card is a bad version of this card, unless we're talking, even when you're talking commander, it doesn't matter sometimes because people just play both. It's like parallel lives. Parallel lives is a bad doubling season. You know, primal vigor is that the card, right? Is a bad yeah, this. Primal yeah. vigor is a bad. It doesn't both, matter. You know what? It's a good both because yeah. you can only play one copy of doubling season and one copy of pattern or uh, parallel lives in edh and yeah i actually know. think i'm gonna put primal vigor in my fantasy deck because i want people to double their tokens especially <laughs> when i give them tokens it's like sure you can have two right of the raging storm tokens have fun yeah well and that's the thing though people looked at modern horizons they said these are bad versions of legacy cards and then they didn't want them and as a result you had cards that are just way cheaper than they are now because keep in mind the set is still in print it's not an issue of the set going out of print and then whatever. The car, the people could still buy the set from distributors if there was demand for it, but they haven't, and the cards are getting expensive now because it turns out what matters is how they play in modern, not how they compare to cards you can't play in modern. Every card's a bad duel. Every land's a bad duel land, but fetch lands are still worth the hundred bucks. There, soapbox, boom. Got him. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Speaking of uh, new cards, Throne of Eldraine this, uh, is a here almost. We are we are right up against it. It is here on MTG Arena. You, there already have people playing the the force the the post rotation format for standard. We saw we got the trailer. We're deep in preview season. We have our own preview video that we're working on this week. They should have uh, called it Game it of Thrones time. of Eldraine. So JJ and I went to film our preview video tonight, and we're this is Tuesday when we're recording, and I was we're pretty hyped. We we sat down. We, we did. Did we tell it. people we were getting a preview? Yeah, we card? did. We did. Yes, it, we posted it on Twitter. I don't know if we. Mentioned we also it mentioned it on the podcast. Uh, so we pre we brainstormed everything last weekend in Indy, and we were going to borrow my buddy's basement to film part of it, um, which you'll understand once you see the video. So I, I cleared it with him yesterday. Hey, we're going to come over tomorrow night. Blah blah. blah we we'll use your basement. Uh, JJ comes over, we head over there to film it, and uh, he's not there, and he doesn't answer his phone, and he doesn't reply to texts, and I either have the option of using the codes from his house I have from like a year and a half ago to try to break in, uh, and setting off the alarm if I'm wrong, or we were like, okay, well, we need to go to this, we need to go to Buffalo Wild Wings for dinner um, for our card, and this is part of the, you know, I mean, if you saw the chair burning video, there always has to be a Buffalo Wild Wings involved. So we're like, we'll go there first. No big there deal. We'll go film that part of it. So we call and they're like, oh, it's a 45 minute wait on to go orders. So we're like, okay, that's terrible. Why? So it, they were busy tonight, man. I don't know. They, it was, don't place they know, was, they're, place don't they know they're a Buffalo Wild Wings? Place was oh, packed. So, God. but we're like, fine, whatever. We'll just go in since we're waiting on my friend anyways. Uh, so we go, we get there. We're literally did you walking. go in ten minutes before they closed? No, we did not. We we were literally walking to our table, and then JJ goes, "Oh, I forgot to get a microphone. We can't record tonight." And I was just like, "All right, we're leaving now." 
<laughs> There's no reason. <laughs> We're going home. I was like, you just want to take me home, JJ. <laughs> we'll you forgot this. a microphone at the party. We'll do this another night. I didn't want you wanted to pay a hundred dollars for a microphone at the party. Get out of here. I know we, we Jason and I were like, we'll we'll buy one Monday or something and we'll bring it. And then you're like, I'm loud. It'll be fine. I was and loud and screaming. it was fine. And then you didn't help. We had to have a patron. I, I didn't yell. help. Yeah. <laughs> sure thing. I was I was the only yeller. That's pretty much true. Anyways, so that's what happened with the video. Take one. So, hey, take two. It's It can't be worse than that, right? We're going to give it another shot later this week. If you want to know why it is, that's another three years after this. When we don't get another preview. Maybe because we uh, we didn't do a very good job planning tonight. Although I have to there's say. There's dozens of pictures of me binge drinking uh, at a Wizards event also. I have to say, it is, you know, a lot of people get their preview cards and they just tweet them. They tweet them out at midnight or whatever. So we're doing better than that, right? We're, we're, we want to put the effort and we want it to be good. So we we all sat down at dinner. We came up with a plan. So when you do see this video, I hope you enjoy it because we're, as you can tell, we're putting a lot of work into it. What else from Throne of Eldraine uh, besides that trailer are you guys excited about? I'm excited how unexcited everyone else seems to... Th everyone's like, oh, I'm so burned out of magic. One case of Throne of Eldraine, please. So that's what makes me excited is the <laughs> just the sheer hypocrisy of magic players as always. Just like not always could, the same people, DJ. I'm that's, looking forward to, to paying twenty five dollars for a booster to get a extended art bulk rare. Yeah, that I is... actually think this stupid fairy th or the Mer the Mer Corbin they put printed a bro broken. No, I don't want to talk set. about it. I don't want to talk. There's about a broken it. Merfolk in this There's set too, and I don't want to talk about. It. You know what? I think honestly, these the twenty dollar boosters are a good thing to try because they can always go back to doing Mythic Edition if it doesn't work out. But if these go Gangbusters, I was under the could. impression they're just going to do both. Are they doing a Mythic Edition? Why well, wouldn't they? Not for this set. Yeah, because we'll they're. <laughs> I think they're going to sell them all regardless. No, they're doing the, for those who don't know, they're doing these, there's different tiers of boosters essentially. Now there's, there's going to be like guild boosters, even though they're not guilds anymore. It's just color boosters. More well, or those less. have been a thing for a while. Like yeah. that's not a new thing. Yeah. It's just, they are, they are naming I, I them yeah. differently. That, now. Yeah. They have, they have that. Then they have your normal, your tournament booster. Then they have your premium booster or whatever. That's like, well, it's, it's, I, it's called a draft booster. It's draft sure, booster. Man. Yeah, it's, it's a tur it's draft tournament booster. draft booster. It's just a normal pack. Uh, and then they have the expensive ones, which are what, 20 bucks? There's no MSRP, Corbin. They abolished MSRP. 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 15 bucks, $10. I guess I guess we'll figure it out. I know the unit cost is going to be above <laughs> 10. Yeah, they're going to be very pricey. So, but they're going to be have cool cards in them, right? Those are the ones where you can get all the all the really neat expensive stuff. Corbin, Corbin, why don't you want to talk about the broken merfolk? Look, man, they, from what I've seen so far, there are two merfolk. One of them is that artifact merfolk that is very good for the decks that are good against merfolk. You mean the Lady of the Lake? Which is exactly what merfolk needed, is cards that are good for the decks that are good against it, right? The other one wants so badly to not be a merfolk that it turns itself into a human. It's, come on. It's gay crash all over again. I mean, if you had like a a racist caricature of a Jamaican person as like your only friend, you'd probably want to turn yourself into a human just to get away from that. Before Are you talking you about Kiora? Like canceled on Twitter. I'm talking about Ariel and the the crab, oh. or the the lobster, oh. or whatever. You wanted it completely different. I thought you were. T I guess, and yeah, that was no. this I was thinking of with elves. Yeah, Back, yeah that man, was her that original story. Up. Was you, racist. People are like you could never make blazing saddles now. I'm like, I don't think you can make Little Mermaid now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my daughter learning she should change for a man. You know? Well, I sure. Give up the one thing about yourself that makes you unique so you can please just the dumbest guy ever. <laughs> wow. They didn't, they, everyone who's listening to this podcast for the first time after coming to the party, they might have been interested <laughs> before, but now we're on to the Little Mermaid talk. And I'm, Don't get welcome me started to the about show. The, the love letter to Stockholm Syndrome known as Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> But you can make that movie because they did. 
Why don't they remake that? They, they the remade that movie. They, they clearly, acknowledge clearly that can. Gaston is the hero of that story because he totally is the hero of that story. Why won't anyone acknowledge that Gaston's the hero? No, he's a jerk, man. He's not a jerk. What? He's not a jerk. Jerk. The Why only, is he a jerk? Because... How is he a jerk? The only jerky thing that you could claim he did was getting her dad locked up for being nuts. But guess what? Her dad's nuts, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> And when he found out there was actually a monster and not her dad's insane rantings, he went to rescue her and her new boyfriend just murders him. That was what he got. He's like, dude, he read like the first half of the script. He's like, I'm for sure the hero of this story, right? <laughs> I just talk about how many eggs I can eat and like do some push ups and then all the women want me. And then I go to the castle and rescue the damsel. It's like, yeah, that's how the movie ends. Well, that's good, man. That's nice that that movie subverted expectations. It subverted the expectations of like a guy who tried to save her life getting murdered <laughs> by a guy who kidnapped her. But OK, sure. Yeah, it's like Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Full Ned circle. Stark is uh, really up against it. How is he going to get out of this pickle? <laughs> In two pieces. Yep, that was me reading the book. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, that I agree, man. I watched the the first time I watched the show. I had not read the books. I have since, obviously, but. I had no idea what it was. I watched a show and I knew we were towards the end of the season, but I knew there was an episode left. And I was like, this is really getting up to it. Huh? I wonder how they're going to do this here. How's he going <laughs> to break out of prison? <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, no, I got even got to the point where they like have him up there. And then when Joffrey's like, jo the whole thing is Joffrey's supposed to agree to let him go to the wall. But then Joffrey's like, no. And I'm like, oh man, now stuff's about to go down. Like Arya's is going to bust out. Like somebody's going to do something. And then, no one did anything. It turns yep. out that all along Game of Thrones was here to teach us about what the world was going to be like in 2016. We should have known when they cast Sean Bean. Well, like if that's fair. If, if, if you couldn't but, tell, but I'd only ever seen Sean Bean in um in Lord of the Rings, so like I didn't know that was like his where thing. he died. Yeah, but like that's one movie, <laughs> you know. It <laughs> hasn't he died in like 20 movies or something like that. He like, has died or not made it to the end of. Lots of movies, uh, except for Goldeneye, where he died twice. Which movie? Which is more than the normal amount of dying. Which movie? Goldeneye. He was in Goldeneye? Yeah, he was Alec Trevelyan. 006. Really? Did you see Goldeneye? Did I you mean, play Goldeneye? Yes, but I okay. will tell you that Alec Trevelyan in the game Goldeneye Sure doesn't look like Sean Bean in Game of Thrones, so I definitely never made that connection. Yeah, because his head is made of four pixels. I I know it's like a, it's it's a pyramid with like two smaller pyramids on it. No, but I just googled it, and you're right; it totally made. He's just so he's like so much skinnier. Like his face just looks a lot different in Golden Eye because you know it was thirty years ago or whatever. It wasn't thirty years ago. It was like ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, I do 20. think that that year does sound correct. Uh, it was 95. Yeah, 25 years ago. Anyway, <laughs> wow. Magic the Gathering. Oh, yeah, Throne of Eldraine. Uh, is a card game. Wasn't that trailer cool? Garrick I like Hype. how... I like how everybody got their five minutes of fame to connect the dots and, like, Charlie Day, their, their like, red string and all the connections. They're like, wait... I figured out the code. This is kind of like Shrek. <laughs> I'm a genius. And now Wizards is acknowledging it. They're like going, leaning into the joke. I don't know. Yeah. If they're going to make a, a movie, let's not do Shrek next time. I think we were ahead of the curve. I mean, we, we talked about Shrek on an After Hours or something not very long ago. Like, I'm surprised no one's... Are we part of the... You know, the conspiracy web here? That's why we got a preview code. I work for, like, I do work for Wizards of the Coast. I We all have connections. We get a preview card. We talk about Shrek. Now there's a Shrek set. Illuminati confirmed. That's how it works. I even said Alec Trevelyan's head was an upside-down pyramid, and now... <laughs> <laughs> Twilight Zone music. That was it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. No, but for real, that trailer at... was awesome. If you wondered if Arena was making money, uh, go watch that trailer. <laughs> That's not just... a cheap trailer to produce. 
I'm just looking at Clackbridge Troll and wanting to know how many people will waste money on that card because I don't think it's very good at all. I can't wait I for there. I'm to just be... glad they didn't put a Lincoln Park song in this trailer. <laughs> I'm excited for 400 posts that go to the top of the Magic subreddit. Altered card to be like Shrek. Significant others first altered kind of looks like Shrek. What do you think? 8,000 upvotes. My SO made Shrek cupcakes. <laughs> I think I'm going to watch Shrek with Ben tomorrow. Oh, wait. Oh, are you guys excited what for the Shrek new Storm? What Shrek with Ben? Was that a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, one of the direct, uh, direct to home video. Are you guys excited for all the uh, the Stormcrow memes with Loch Ness Monster? Yeah. yeah. But ben Blyweiss already dropped the price of it 49 cents just to make the joke. Yeah. <laughs> So shout out to Ben Playways at Star City Games. You did it, man. Good at social media, that one is. I tried to buy something on if one of his get off my desk sales a while back, but it was they all went too fast. He knows what he's doing, man. No, but for real, uh there's a lot ben of Ben Blyways cool... at Star City is a lot like the uh buyers and sellers at channelfireball.com. <laughs> <laughs> we were shooting... sponsor. I mean Look, clearly the best place to go if you want to look at the previews is ChannelFireball.com because we do put them up every day from across the uh, You don't... Look, man, you can shill, but you don't have to lie. <laughs> Jesus. I'll tell you what I'm most... Uh, ex- we do. We have a... We, the card I'm most excited about, though, was a card that uh, I think it was today. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. The, the free spell, if it's the first spell you cast of the game, Once Upon a Time. Oh my god. This card's just so cool. What? It's just neat, what, right? What are they thinking? That card's very good in Neo Brand. Ooh, it is. I mean it's good in a lot of decks, right? It's also good it's in my good in a lot of decks. It's good in my Immercool deck because, you know, I it, it, it's a mana dork deck that really wants a mana dork on turn one. So and you can apply, you know, I'll talk about my deck, but you can apply it to, to, to any deck that fits this kind of like Neo Brand does. Do you think Ancient but. Stirrings is too weak because it costs a <laughs> mana? Boy, do we have the card for you. Yeah, what's nuts is that it's an instant, to be honest. But so so if that had been our preview card, you know how oh, I wouldn't have been like, this is too good. I wish they hadn't printed this. <laughs> there yeah. don't ever give us another preview. Once upon a time is a two mana green instant. But if it's the first first spell you've cast in the game, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. So look at the top five cards of your library, put a creature or land from among them into your hand, rest on the bottom of the library. So my Immercool deck is all about mana dorks, or it needs to find Immercools to through the breach, or it needs to find hideaway lands to function. Like this card is just unreal. I'm it's extremely bizonkers. excited about this. Neo, I think this is like makes Neo Brand like a- Andy and I were talking about this in the card. This makes Neo Brand a very, very, very consistent deck. I mean, we'll see. People. People have like, been on about gets, that deck for a while, and it basically doesn't exist in the meta anymore. Like, seven people played it in Vegas out of 1,800 or something. I mean, Vegas was a Hogak fest. I, it was, but, like, those people weren't going to play. It's seven people out of 1,800. It's just, it's, you know, it's a footnote. It's not even remotely competitive. So I don't know that Once Upon a Time is going to take it from not even really like it's it's on the extreme fringes of, of i mean it's it's like a matter of percentages though like if it's it a 49 percent deck it's a but garbage it's not deck, that's what i'm 50. telling you it's not a 49 percent deck because no one was playing the deck it's like a 30 percent deck and it, yeah this might make it 40 it could be a giant leap but it's got a long way to go i don't i don't think that it is one card away from being broken but if it is one card away from being broken this might this be that card. card yeah i i agree with that Everything that deck's already jumped, so there's not a lot of financial incentive there no, necessarily. Sure. But yeah, but think about that because everything we've just said about my deck and about the Neo Brand deck, like that applies to every deck that this card could go in, you know. And if those cards aren't, if those decks aren't one card away, a different deck will be at some point. Yep. Neat card. It's a cool design too, right? They so they they did ley lines forever ago. Uh, then they did the Chancellor cycle in New Phyrexia. And then they kind of went away from that sort of mechanic for a very long time. And they reprinted uh, the ley lines and they did Sphinx of Mysteries where you could scry if it was in your opening hand. And now they're doing this. So this is a, you know, this is kind of a design space that they hadn't really played around with a lot over 26 years of magic history. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be a trend necessarily because it's very dangerous, but it is really cool when it, you know, when it comes out from time to time like this. I am very curious, uh, 
to see why they're focusing so heavily on equipment after turning away from it the past few years. Um, because I was under the impression they had acknowledged a lot of the innate faults of equipment and how it operates as a card mechanic. Um, and that's sort of why they were leaning in towards vehicles, right? They were like, we made vehicles in Kaladesh, we're going to slowly lean towards vehicles because they don't require additional mana uh, yeah. investment and they're kind of clum- they're not as clumsy because you can just like tap creatures to use them and they're more flavorful or whatever. And then just they're like, hey, knights and equipment, 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 tr- double mythic equipment, lots of mythic equipments equipment and well, i'm just like wow that's a lot of stuff I, focusing I, I on do think that, that you... they said something about how they they weren't they didn't go they're not going as deep on vehicles as they were it's not i think they said it's not something every set wants and we'll do it where it makes sense so it's evergreen in that sense but not in the way that equipment would be so i think maybe they pulled back a little bit from that but also i mean there is a vehicle in this set right there's a carriage or something i believe yes um and that makes sense, but it also makes like sense. There's so lots of hard f- into a mechanic that they thought was a failure. There's lots of favorite. Well, there's lots of you know, famous swords or famous pieces of equipment or whatever in Arthurian legend that they do kind of have to draw on to an extent, right? I believe there's only one legendary equipment so far. <laughs> it's the red one, Cinder yeah. Cleave or whatever. Yes, Ember Cleave. I don't know. I will say no, they're also leaning. They're also leaning very hard into colored artifacts. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to tell these days with wizards, uh, and I say these days, but I mean it, they've become much more bold about design over the past five years, where they're willing to push some of those things that, and just you know hybrid mana or colored equipment or things that like they kind of get they get put into sets occasionally these days, uh, like it was in Corset twenty twenty as well, right? They get put into sets where it's not like the thing in the set, you know, colored equipment was Esper's thing in Shards of Alara or just colored artifacts. Yeah. 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 And and now they so it's hard to tell if something like that is like, oh, this is a return that means something like, oh, there's probably an equipment, an artifact deck set in the future that these are like seeding. It's hard to tell if it's something like that or if it's just like these are in their toolbox now, like vehicles or whatever. I mean, it's hard to argue that, I mean, not argue, but it's hard to even suggest that these are seeding for artifact sets of the future because we just got all the information for the sets in the future. Right. And yeah, it's... that was that was a theory. But that's what I thought for a while was we'd seen a fair amount of either artifact or colorless equipment type things over the past, you know, couple of sets that I thought maybe it would be seeding for some. But yeah, now that we've seen the, the slate for the next year. Yeah, it's Theros, a uh, big scary Loch Ness yeah, monster Ikori, world, and Ikori, then Zendikar. Uh, I believe it's called. Yeah, is it is it Kaiju World? I would love to go oh, back I hope to it's Kaiju. Not have it be Kaiju World. Kaiju, but not Eldrazi. Yeah, Kaiju, but not Eldrazi, and it's in Japan, but not Kamigawa. Yeah. It's like that modern be, Japan. That would be cool. Yeah, the vehicles can be subway cars, and then just like the Godzilla creatures, just destroy them. It'd be amazing. <laughs> That'd be pretty neat. Uh... I mean, what else from the set have you guys seen that you like? Uh, mechanics or cards? Is there anything you think that... Oh, I like uh, I like the Arthurian mystical questing beast with 45 abilities on it. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that you're talking about... Uh, the, questing yeah, beast. Quest, yeah, it is actually just called yeah. questing beast. Yeah, so for people who don't know, it's a 4-4 four, four for 4, 2 generic and 2 green. Legendary. Vigilance, death touch haste. Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Combat damage that we dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And when it deals combat damage to an opponent, you deal that much damage to a target planeswalker they control. I'll tell you, this looks like the you answer to... Four, t- four for four had drawbacks yeah. and not six abilities? <laughs> this looks like the answer to Teferi to me. Right? This is the, you know, to we recognize how strong things like Teferi or Narset or something like that can be. It's the swing back from answers to threats. Yeah. yeah, because I, I mean they they've had this arms race esque thing going on for a few years now, where it's first creatures and uh, powerful like attacking things were the the pinnacle of magic, and then they swerved hard with answers in like Ixlan and uh, like control was really good with Ravnica, where you could just like answer pretty much anything with Teferi, uh, Thought Erasure. Uh, what's the Wrath from Ravnica? Hi, it's the, Wrath. I mean, there's that and the the four mana black one. Ritual of Soot. 
yeah 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 there's just like there's been so many answers where you can just like kill anything on the board exile anything on the board just get esper control was very very good and you could just like answer anything for less mana and then this is feels like the swing back where it's like okay we need to punch some holes in teferi and yeah like esper control was really good then teferi time reveler sort of pushed esper control out entirely and people would play either esper hero or whatever else but this is the we just printed yeah they, they printed all these powerful planeswalkers in war of the spark and they haven't been they've certainly obviously impacted standard like teferi completely changed the face of standard small teferi just because you could no yes. longer play instance um however like it was fine in the format but you know sort of who knows in in an open world but this I, this is what they've talked about the the play design has talked about they're not trying to predict every metagame they just want to make sure that metagames exist where cards can counter them so that it becomes cyclical at the very least so you know maybe teferi's not for whatever reason isn't that good in the new format or this card with its billion abilities isn't just broken because i mean it's got a bunch of abilities but we've seen lots of big green creatures not really do much in in the past but this exists so if little teferi does take over the format at some point people will just start playing this in response to it and it'll shift back so i think this is some a card that probably has a big hand of play design in it and it's one of those cards that maybe they wouldn't that wouldn't have existed three years ago before they had play design um to actually punish it so to, to punish certain strategies and that's how we got really still metagames or metagames dominated by the scarab god or whatever because the card just didn't exist to combat that uh and this seems to me like a card that's specifically designed to answer the powerful planeswalkers if they become too good because there's not every metagame where questing beast is good correct so yeah i mean so on a financial note knights are the thing obviously. don't pre-order it for 40 dollars. well yeah I mean, like, this is going to be one of those cards where uh, it's like just a a, a Carnage Tyrant-esque card where you just read it and there's 85 abilities on it and it's a week one standard mythic and you're like, I really need to beat the become a Pokemon master and win the SCG Open week one and then you spend $800 in your standard deck and then you play it for twice in <laughs> four months and then you sell this card to me for eight dollars like six months down the road because you realize you hate standard like this is just one of those cards where you you read all the abilities and even though it might be pre-selling for twenty dollars and maybe you think that's a steal just maybe hold the brakes and uh just wait a bit yeah um jason do you have anything else you want to talk about before we move on no all right i want to get to my pick of the week yeah uh let's do it then let's go pick of the week sure why not do we have an email though do we have emails we want to read first oh yeah we, we can read we us an email, an email or two we can get to an email from usa forever is their okay their tag spelled eva forever good thank we got that yeah uh dear brew crew i give you money so read my email insert patreon pitch here I recently purchased a collection of about 600 rares. Are there simple and easy ways to input this into a buy list, or do I have to type it in by hand? Also, <laughs> what is the best way to ship a large quantity of cards? Thanks, Daniel. Sent for my iPhone. Yeah, I know. I'm not that creative. So I, I missed the number. Was it 600? Is that what he said? Six, 600. Conveniently, just a little more than you can fit in a fat pack box. That's annoying. I mean, he said about 600, so it might be less. Yeah. Um, so... The the answer is there are some places that can allow you to like do a, a CSV or something, but realistically you have to put it all in by hand. I mean, Card Kingdom lets you use a CSV. I don't know if Channel Fireballs by West allows you to use a CSV. It's just sometimes um, it's just not necessarily you have to because you have to make the CSV. Like you're putting in time one way or yeah. another. You know, like. Yep. It, and sometimes it, when you you get a CSV, you can't just put it right back in. You get it as an output yeah. that doesn't work as an input elsewhere. Which I agree. Is yeah, there's the lots worst. of there's just a lot of you put the time into the CSV. A lot of things can go. You also wrong. don't necessarily want to ship every card. Exactly, that's what I was going to get to. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to spend, if you're going to have to put the time in either way, at least do it where you get to catch the card that's only buy listing for twenty five percent of its price this week or whatever you know, and set it aside for the next time. Yes. And the best way to ship a large quantity of cards, well, the definition of large depends on who you're talking <laughs> is to. Is indeed arbitrary. 
Uh, but if, if 600 cards is a lot for you, like Corbin said, you can generally fit roughly that amount into a fat pack box or a bundle box is what they're called now. Yeah. Um, you can generally ship that amount in like a, uh, medium, uh, like, or not a medium, but like a padded flat rate envelope, USPS, just go to PayPal. So one big mistake a lot of people make when shipping cards is they do not use paypal shipping which a lot of people should if you have access to a printer at home and a computer you can just go to paypal.com slash ship now and then you type in the shipping information like the weight of the package the distance is going the address and then the label that print you print out will be significantly cheaper than at the usps post office and you just drop it off or have your mail carrier can pick it up and it's generally like 10 to 25 percent cheaper uh, so for a fat pack box, you can usually fit that inside a medium, uh, flat rate bubble mailer, which is $7 and 55 cents. Uh, any larger than that is you scale like flat rate boxes because those you ship by just the confines of the box and not by weight. So you're going like medium flat rate box, which is uh, great for nickels. Yeah. Cause yes. when you jam everything in there, all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I have a lot of room in this flat rate box. Everything else I put in here is free real estate. And that's when you like shore up the box with your quarters, dimes and nickels and just it's free money. It pays for the postage. I, I try to aim typically at a fat pack box size, a, a, a bundle, whatever bundle box, because I have a bunch of those in my house that are, you know, I take all the fat pack boxes I can get because they are technically worth money. Some of them worth a real amount of some of them are like 15, 20 bucks. Right. So they yeah, do like have this, a value. But I also one from Cold Snap. Yeah. A, as a result of buying them all. Uh, you end up with a bunch of bad ones or you end up with damaged boxes that you're not actually going to be able to resell. So those are the ones I typically use. And I try to fill up one of those to be tight uh, and then end my buy list order basically so that it's most convenient. If I go over that with an order, I'll throw in a, um, a you know, a bad deck box full. Um, but you want to try to pack whatever you're sending to as full as possible. So if you have 600 and you were to buy list all of them, that's probably your best bet. Um, but yeah, after that, you just stuff them in a padded envelope and ship them off. Yep. All right. Alternatively, if you do not want to ship them, you can sell cards at your local game store. <laughs> Would recommend that one, please. Uh, how about another email? Do we have another email? It was a pick of the week time. I say it's pick of the week pick time. Pick of the we week have, time. We have other emails, but like next week, can, we, next we week. can... We can space that out. We don't want to overload everyone. We don't want to. Why don't you just send us some emails so we could read more than one a week and you could have your email right on the cast. There you go. Especially if you're someone who went to patreon.com slash brainstorm brewery and you got access to the discord, you got access to the spreadsheet where we track all of our breaking bulk and pick of the week picks and you can get them on Monday or Tuesday when we record instead of Friday when the episode comes out. Uh, you can have all that stuff, plus, uh, hey, maybe one of these handsome drinking glasses and access uh, to future events where we do crazy Modern Horizons drafts, maybe, with our $20 patrons. You don't know. We get all kinds of levels, and we're, you know, giving all kinds of value. And, hey, we'll read yep. your stupid email if you tell us you're a patron. So. <laughs> all right. Pick of the week, you J DJ. You've been waiting. Go ahead, my man. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Time for the pick of the week. So, if I look at the spreadsheet here, I have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five of my past picks of the week in the past several weeks have been from Commander Precons. I have picked cards like uh, Clever Impersonator, Mystic Barrier, Impact Resonance, uh, and they are just cards that have slowly crept up over time and ne uh, negated their reprints. They're just like, they shrug off reprints. They don't really care. Commander players uh, have a bottomless uh, money pit for spending in terms of how many decks they're willing to make. And so I am a very big fan of very boring picks. I, I like buying cards that are very, very cheap uh, after a reprint and then waiting a year or two and knowing that the existing trends of those reprints will prove that the card will go up again. Yeah, uh, go look at the price of... Uh... You know, all this stuff from, like, the the last couple Master sets. So, you know? Go like look it. at Soul Ring. <laughs> right? Yeah, Soul Ring, too, and, like, Eternal Witness and some of the stuff that just just laughs at reprints. Yes, uh, and the card I am talking about this week specifically is Exotic Orchard. This is a land that will tap for whatever color your opponent's control. Uh, so if you are sitting across from a five-color deck, then you are all set. If you are sitting across from a Jun deck and a blue-white deck, you are all set. And this card will generally make 
multiple colors of mana and it has bottomed out at roughly 50 cents uh, from its previous $2 flatline. So it has approximately eight reprints, which is a lot of reprints, and it just continues to go back up to $2 every single time. I This is actually probably the first card in a very long time that I've gone very, very deep on. So spoiler alert, I have a lot of copies coming in because I have a very, very high level of confidence in this card going back up to its $2 price point, And I am just all in on exotic orchard normally i buy cards like command tower soul ring after a commander precon has flooded the market with those cards those cards actually haven't hit as no as low of a low as they used to um soul ring is still around three dollars when he used to be able to get them at like a dollar fifty post commander hit uh but exotic orchard was very very low and i went very very deep so this is a card where if you just have if you play an exotic orchard every deck and you plan on building a deck a month pick up three play sets yeah, and I think one of the things we should talk about here, especially if we have anybody newer listening, is the takeaway from this isn't DJ bought a lot of these, so go buy a lot of them, or Correct. DJ's yes. pitching it to you simply to make him money. You know, uh, uh, he's not trying to pump and dump this card. The point is, DJ runs a store, and stores do this all the time. He's just giving you a peek behind the curtain. And all of those things you said, you can go verify for yourself. You know, go go look at the price trend of the card and see that it's done this and realize that this is your opportunity to get them cheaper before that happens again. Um, these are things that every store does. And, you know, we try to give you sort of, you know, we operate on all of us on sort of different levels here, right? Um, I, I really work heavily in an LGS level. DJ does a lot on TCG player. Uh, so we kind of have those different perspectives. So, you know, people who are really all about volume shipping online, they do stuff like this all the time. So you're getting a peek behind the curtain here to see how it works. For, for every hundred copies of this card that I buy, there are 10 players like doing that. Yeah. There are, uh, the, what's the ratio? I mean, like for every, for every hundred copies I buy, there are a thousand players like buying one. Yeah. That, that's what I'm more So like my, my buying significant copies of this card from one particular store, mind you, I actually found all of these copies from, of this card from one store online. So there was one store that opened several hundred of these commander precons. And I said, that's the one card I want. And so I didn't, I didn't go like clean out seven or eight different stores. I didn't buy out star city channel. I, I just found one store that had all of these copies and bought them all yep. from that one store. And they're making their money because they'd rather sell all of their copies at once to one person instead of... If they weren't happy with that amount of money, they would not have listed the card for that yes. amount of money. So they could have had several hundred people just make an order for one of each, and that's way more miserable for the store. That's true, too. So that's a, I mean, this, that's this a, a, that wasn't the argument I was making, where, but that is, a, that is a benefit to that store. I, I'm doing them a favor by buying them out, the MTG <laughs> Finance story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason, what do you got? Uh, I got a card that is such a good spec that Corbin assumed he thought of it already um, because he doesn't think he's losing in the spec game. Uh, this is I predicated both on this being uh, one of the top cards in Modern Horizons. Um, after Spring, Bro- Spring Bloom Druid, which was six, this is the number seventh most played card in the set. And with us returning to Theros very soon, I think it's time to pick up Hall of Heliod's Generosity. It's a legendary rare land from Modern Horizons, and uh, it's it's good, right? So play it with enchantments. Enchantments are going to go to the yard. You're going to get them back. It'll be a thing. Uh, you know, Esther the Mac, the Mast, Kestia, the Cultivator, uh, Tuvasa, the Sunlit. Those all bumped a lot of cards like Sarah Sanctum and, uh, you know, some of the other enchantment cards, uh, Starfield and Nick, stuff like that. Um if there's only one good enchantments commander in uh in uh like a whole Theros block, which seems unlikely, um, you know, people need more copies of this. So this is under five bucks and that's non correct, even in a set with like a hundred dollar mythic. So I think you just go deep on this now. All right. I like it. That seems like a good pick. Uh I'm gonna follow up here with one that is predicated a little bit on Stoneforge decks and while this particular card is not inc- like really taken off in modern yet, it has been a, a modern player multiple times in the past, and I think it's got a lot of upside because it plays very well with your equipment package. You know, the Stone Blade decks, the the standard ones, Cobblade used to play Squadron Hawk just to have a creature to put their sword on. 
Uh, and I think Spell Queller is going to fill that role very nicely in modern. Not only is the card extraordinarily powerful in itself, it's a 2-3 Flash Flyer for 3. When it enters the battlefield, exile a spell, a spell from Vader of Mana costs 4 or less. And then when it leaves the battlefield, they get to replay it. But what this means is, you know, this picks up your sword very well. In addition to being a very good card in those, you know, those blue-white-esque decks or your Bant decks or things like that. So... Spell Queller has a lot uh, of powerful things going on for it uh, as a result of the Stoneforge stuff. And it started to tick up just a little from its low of about four uh, of about five dollars. So you can get them right now between five and five fifty. And I think, you know, it's Eldritch Moon. That's a that set is getting up there in years old, right? It's 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 three years old now, uh, which doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but that's where we're at. Uh, and it was a second set in there after Battle for Zendikar, so uh it we'll see you know if it's got a lot of upside but it had peaked out in the past at, at, at eight or nine and i think it's probably headed back towards that and all it takes is we're very early in this modern metagame it's got the the tools around it. it all it takes is one person doing well as we've seen with a bunch of cards over the past month uh to spike it up just double overnight yep uh, bye everyone <laughs> all right everybody Thanks for listening. Thank you for coming to GPND. I do want to point out all of these picks of the week you can pick up at Channel Fireball. It's free shipping all September on orders over $50. So we want to thank them for being our sponsor. And if you're looking to pick up somebody's pick of the week or anything else to finish out your deck, uh, that is where I would suggest to do that, everyone. Thank you for listening. This is Brainstorm Brewery. We'll see you next week. Peace.